So there's a brand new concern now about uh, uh, a new risk for testosterone therapy, which is cardiovascular risk. What's really interesting about this is that for the last 20 years, there had been a growing and pretty substantial body of evidence indicating that testosterone was beneficial in terms of mortality and also in terms of some of the known risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So for example, we know that testosterone therapy reduces fat mass, increases lean mass, improves glycemic control, reduces waist circumference, all of which should be beneficial in terms of cardiovascular risk. And we have several studies that have shown that low levels of testosterone are associated with increased mortality, increased incidence of coronary artery disease, increased severity of coronary artery disease. And so it was rather strange when in November 2013 appeared a journal article published in the Journal of the American Medical Association that suggested that there was increased cardiovascular risks with testosterone. Important to note that that study was a retrospective study and we always have to be cautious with those. What that study, uh, written by Vegan and colleagues, uh, reportedly showed was that the absolute risk of stroke, heart attacks, and death in men who took testosterone was increased compared to men who were untreated but also had low levels of testosterone. In fact, the authors made an error and this was subsequently pointed out and the paper was changed, but not until the damage was done and the headlines were made. In fact, what the actual absolute rate of events showed, an absolute rate of events refers to what really happened, number of bad events divided by the number of people in that group. What it showed is that the rate of adverse events for heart attack, stroke, and death was 21.2% in the untreated group and only 10.1% in the testosterone group. In other words, the testosterone group had less than half the rate of adverse events, and yet the headline appeared to be different. So this study had other problems as well, including after the fact they discovered that nearly 10% of the all-male population turned out to be female. So a number of medical organizations and many leading uh, individuals in the field have actually called for that article to be retracted, uh, which has not happened, but retracted on the basis of the data no longer being credible. Since the publication of that study and another retrospective study that also asserted some increased risk, we now have something on the order of 16 subsequent studies, not one of which has shown increased cardiovascular risk, and several of which have shown substantial benefits of having either uh, an endogenous or naturally occurring higher level of testosterone, just naturally, or with testosterone therapy. The most interesting of those is a paper by Sharma and co-workers where they looked at over 80,000 individuals, retrospective again, but they had three groups. Uh, one was a group of men with low testosterone who were treated and their testosterone levels normalized. Another was a group that got testosterone treatment, but their levels failed to normalize. They still remained low. And a third was an untreated group. The best results were seen in the men who were treated with testosterone and their levels normalized. When compared to the men whose levels did not normalize, or even untreated men, the mortality rate was reduced again by about half, heart attack rate was down, and stroke rate was down. Rather remarkable study suggesting that just applying testosterone may not be enough, but actually we need to actually get adequate treatment as evidenced by an increase in the blood levels. So I think today the evidence accumulated over now for several decades is a fairly rich literature that is not yet definitive but is strongly suggestive that if anything testosterone may be beneficial for cardiovascular risk. Nonetheless, uh, the regulatory agencies in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration, did issue a warning but a fairly cautiously worded one saying, as they often do, there may be increased risks or there are reports of it. The European Medicines Agency looked at all the same data and declined to add a warning. Um, and as a clinician myself, I think that we have to go with the best evidence that's available. Things that make sense usually make sense. We know that testosterone improves lean mass decreases fat mass, decreases waist circumference, improves glycemic control, 
And to me, it seems relatively straightforward that none of that should be associated with an increased risk. And maybe what we'd like to find out with a large study is that there possibly is even a beneficial effect that is yet to be shown in a hard, objective way.